What makes an ancient artifact discovery truly remarkable? Is it the monetary value, the age of the object, its rarity? The truth is, it can encompass all of these aspects and even more, or perhaps none of them at all. Fantastic artifact finds have a story to tell, but they can't speak for themselves. So allow us to speak on their behalf in this video. We start with a discovery that happened in Northwest Poland as a lead seal discovered in 2021 has been identified as a rare papal bull from the reign of Pope Boniface IX from 1350 to 1404. Metal detectorists uncovered the seal in the village of Budzistowo near a former cemetery. The initial dirt and corrosion made identification challenging, but specialists in Krakow successfully cleaned and preserved the seal, revealing the inscription that confirmed its association with Boniface. Bully like this one were circular lead seals commonly attached to official documents and proclamations, serving as legally valid and easily recognizable signatures. Metallurgical analysis confirmed the seal's authenticity as it was composed of pure lead from deposits in Cyprus, Sardinia, Greece, and Spain. The seal bears the inscription Boni Fetius PP8 on the reverse side and features the images of St. Peter and St. Paul on the obverse. Historians suggest that the bull was likely kept at the Benedictine Monastery in Old Kolobzereg, as referenced in historical records. The conserved seal is now on display at the Museum of Arms in Kolobzereg, shedding light on the region's rich historical past. The city of Naples in Italy, known for its underground mysteries, holds within it the secrets of the ancient necropolis of Neapolis. Located approximately 30 feet below the current street level of the city's health district, the necropolis was constructed by the Greeks between the end of the 4th and the beginning of the 3rd century BCE. Unearthed within this underground necropolis are Hellenistic tombs adorned with stunning frescoes and sculptures in high relief reflecting the burial practices of affluent Greek families. However, due to the densely populated and publicly accessible nature of the area, systematic excavations have been challenging. To overcome this, a team from the University of Naples and the National Institute of Nuclear Physics employed a muon radiography, a non-invasive technique, to explore the internal structures of the necropolis. By detecting muon flux, using specialized detectors installed underground, the team reconstructed a stereoscopic view of the burial chambers, uncovering both known and previously unknown structures. These findings provide insights into the original landscape of the ancient necropolis. Despite the transformations brought about by urbanization over the centuries, technology like this is the future of archaeology. Peruvian archaeologists from the prestigious Universidad Nacional Mayor de San Marcos have made a groundbreaking discovery at the Miraflores archaeological site in western Peru. Their excavation efforts have revealed the remarkable remains of a 4,000-year-old temple, shedding light on the rich history and cultural practices of ancient Peru. This temple, situated in the lower valley of the Chanque River, served as a significant religious center where elaborate ceremonies and rituals took place. One of the most intriguing findings within the temple complex is a chicana, a symbol of great importance in ancient Peruvian cultures. Carved into a frieze, this chicana is hailed as the oldest complete representation ever discovered in the Andes. Archaeologist Peter Van Dalen emphasizes the significance of the finding, suggesting that it underscores the enduring cultural and religious traditions associated with the chicana symbol, spanning thousands of years from its origins to the Inca period. The excavation has revealed not only the architectural features of the temple, but also the presence of religious cult activities that once occurred within its pyramidal structure. This newfound knowledge offers a glimpse into the spiritual practices and beliefs of the ancient Peruvian people, adding to our understanding of their complex worldview. Archaeologists in Britain made an exciting discovery as they unearthed forgotten sections of a 2,000-year-old Roman wall in London. This riverside wall, built during the 3rd century, served as a defensive barrier for the city. Extensive excavations conducted by the Museum of London Archaeology between 2006 and 2016 
unveiled three stretches totaling 330 feet in length. While the excavations took place several years ago, the findings were only made public in May 2023. These findings have provided valuable insights into Roman masonry and the architectural landscape of ancient London. Constructed using Kentish ragstone, the wall stood 20 feet tall and encircled the city for a span of two miles, emphasizing the significance of Londinium as the epicenter of the Roman Empire. Recognizing the historical value, the recently discovered sections, along with remarkably preserved wooden wharf and quay structures, have received the highest level of heritage protection from England's Department for Culture, Media, and Sport. These remarkable findings offer a captivating glimpse into London's ancient past and showcase the ongoing journey of unearthing the mysteries and stories that lie beneath the city's surface, contributing to the fascinating legacy of Roman London. Speaking of all things Roman, researchers have recently made an intriguing discovery using Google Earth, spotting three Roman military camps in Jordan that shed light on a potentially previously unknown campaign in the second century. These temporary camps provide evidence of the Roman army's march across Arabia to conquer the Nabatean kingdom, which was centered around the renowned city of Petra. The camps, identified by their distinctive rectangular shape and opposing entrances, are in a state of remarkable preservation despite potentially being used for only a short period. It's believed that these hastily constructed bases were built by soldiers as they advanced through the desert, possibly accompanied by mounted troops using camels. Based on the camp dimensions, it's suggested that two cavalry cohorts occupied the westernmost camp, while these smaller eastern structures likely held one cohort each. The camp's location and the route taken by the Roman army indicate a strategic approach to surprise the enemy during the conquest. These findings challenged previous assumptions about the peaceful transfer of power in the Nabataean kingdom and suggest a more complex and potentially violent annexation by the Romans under Emperor Trajan. An Egyptian archaeological mission in the Asuit governorate has made fascinating discoveries at the site of Meir near the city of El Kisaya. The excavation has revealed a wealth of historical treasures from different periods. Among the findings are Byzantine-era buildings and late-period burials, shedding light on the cultural and archaeological developments of those times. The most remarkable discovery is a text of supplications to the first Christian fathers inscribed on the walls of the newly excavated buildings. This valuable inscription, written in Coptic script, provides a unique glimpse into the religious practices and beliefs of the period. Additionally, the upper cemetery has unearthed structures consisting of a courtyard and interconnected rooms showcasing the architectural layout and functional aspects of the site. The lower cemetery is full of poorly preserved burials including skeletal remains, wooden coffins, and funerary furniture, providing insights into burial customs and practices. Among the portable artifacts found are pottery vessels of various shapes and sizes, a collection of blue and black faience beads, and two copper mirrors. These discoveries contribute to our understanding of the rich cultural heritage of Meyer and its significance in ancient Egyptian history. A bone arrowhead discovered in the ancient Philistine city of Gath, the hometown of the biblical giant Goliath, has offered a potential link to a battle described in the Hebrew Bible. According to the biblical account, King Hazael of Aram conquered Goth before turning his sights on Jerusalem. Archaeological excavations in Goth, now located in Israel, have revealed significant damage dating back to the late 9th century BCE, aligning with the biblical narrative of Hazal's conquest. In 2019, archaeologists found a bone arrowhead in the ruins of a street in Goth's lower city, bearing signs of impact, fracture, and breakage indicative of a target hit. The discovery means that it's possible that the arrowhead may have been fired by the city's defenders in a desperate attempt to halt Hazal's army in its tracks. A nearby workshop, previously unearthed in 2006, provided further insight into the manufacturing of bone arrowheads, suggesting it might have served as an emergency production center for the city's defenses. 
Ongoing excavations at the site will hopefully lead to the unveiling of more details about the fall of Goth and its historical significance. Now we head to England, where a silver ring discovered in an Essex field might be connected to a renowned Roman jeweler's hoard found in Norfolk in 1985, according to a historian. The ring features a Carnelian carving of the god Apollo and was unearthed by a metal detectorist near Chelmsford. Essex's finds liaison officer Lori Rogerson suggest that the second century wearer would have worn the ring because they sought the god's protection. She also said that the ring appeared to originate from the same workshop as the Snedisham hoard, which included gemstone intaglios, silver jewelry, coins, and tools. The similarity in carving techniques and the time frame of between the years 125 and 175 further supports this connection. Going further, she explained that the ring would have functioned as a seal, leaving an impression of the engraved image in wax when pressed. She emphasized its significance as evidence of Romano-British society's worship of pagan gods and the personal relationship individuals had with their deities. Another ring discovered in Buckinghamshire in 2018 also has links to the Snedisham workshop. The Essex ring has been declared treasure and the Chelmsford Museum hopes to acquire it for display. During the renovation of stormwater drains in Shanxi Province in March 2023, workers in northern China discovered a remarkable brick tomb from the Jurchen Jin period. Estimated to be over 800 years old, the tomb contained the remains of two adults and one child, as well as several pottery items. An inscribed land coupon found within the tomb indicates that it was constructed between the years 1190 and 1196 during the rule of the Jurchen Jin state. The tomb's south-facing orientation and its similarities to other contemporary tombs in the region suggest a Chinese influence on the style, although the Jurchen state wasn't considered to be part of China at the time. The inner chamber of the tomb features intricately designed bricks that have been styled to resemble carved wood with decorative elements including lions, sea anemones, flowers, and guardian spirits. The discovery provides valuable insights into the Jurchen Jin period and offers a basis for dating other structures and artifacts from this era. Further research and analysis will contribute to our understanding of this significant historical period in China. The Wiltshire Museum in England has acquired a collection of bronze vessels believed to have been buried approximately 1,600 years ago in Roman Britain. Discovered in Wilcott, near Pusey, the vessels are delicate and require conservation before they can be displayed. The museum is seeking public donations to fund the conservation and cleaning process, as well as the creation of suitable mounts for display. The vessels were carefully nested inside each other using natural materials such as heather, bracken, and sedge grasses for protection. Although buried together, the vessels span different time periods, with the largest bronze bowl estimated to have been made around the year 350. The smallest vessel is a wine strainer, which was already over 200 years old when it was buried. Two other bronze bowls, one of which is over a thousand years old, were also part of the collection. Conservation experts from Draken Heritage and Conservation have been selected for the delicate task of preserving these beautiful artifacts. The hoard was discovered by Paul Hart using a metal detector, and the finder and landowner generously donated the vessels to the museum. A recent study has provided evidence that Neolithic farmers in Poland processed milk from cows, sheep, and goats to produce daily products. The study analyzed residues found in 7,000-year-old clay vessels discovered in the Kujue Pomerania province shedding light on the practices of early Central European farmers. The analysis, which utilized proteomic and lipid analysis techniques, revealed that the residues closely resembled those found in modern cheese-making processes and cheese itself rather than whole milk. This indicates that the people of Slosinik, the archaeological site where the vessels were found, practiced cheese-making or other curd-enriching dairy processing methods. The presence of both cow and sheep or goat bones at the site further supports the evidence of multiple species being used for cheese making. These findings provide valuable insights into the diversified dairy practices of Neolithic farmers in Central Europe. 
During the Neolithic period, lactose intolerance was prevalent among Europeans. However, the Late Bronze Age saw the emergence of a genetic mutation that allowed adults to produce lactase, the enzyme responsible for lactose digestion. Simultaneously, cattle farmers developed techniques such as cheesemaking and yogurt production to reduce lactose content in milk. We're finishing in Mexico, where archaeologists have made an exciting discovery at the world-famous Chichen Itza archaeological site. Unearthing an intricately carved stone that's thought to have served as a scoreboard for the ancient Maya ball game known as Pelota. The circular stone, which is thought to be around 1,200 years old and weighs 88 pounds, features hieroglyphic writing surrounding depictions of two players in elaborate decorative headgear. This rare find is providing experts with new and valuable insights into the history and culture of the Maya. The stone was found face down two feet underground in the Casa Colorada complex by archaeologist Lisbeth Beatriz Mendicut Perez, where it's believed to have fallen after the archway it once adorned collapsed many centuries ago. The find is significant because it's rare to find even partial examples of hieroglyphic writing at the Chichen Itza site, let alone a full text. The discovery has sparked further analysis of the writing in an attempt to understand its meaning hopefully shedding new light on the fascinating game and the people who played it by the time the experts are done. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.